I have not been feeling too well the last few days and I couldn't get the TMTX episode done yesterday as per the plan. So to make comments, I want to narrate two Zen stories today and try and connect them to digital transformation. The first story is got headlights. There is a person by name George who uh, seems to be suddenly having a lot of problems in his life. So he talks to his friends to seek advice and one of his friends suggests, hey, there is a um, famous Zen monk in a monastery 60 kilometers away. He is very famous for solving such problems and why don't you go to him? So George, George drives over to the monastery and meets with the monk and starts speaking to him. The monk is very welcoming and listens patiently. George goes on and on about his problems and it's uh, almost evening and it's getting dark. So the monk says, uh, it's already dark, I know you have to go 60 kilometers away. Here are some ideas uh, and he suggests a few ideas to George. George gets very exasperated. He says, look, I have been telling you my problems, so many problems over several hours and all you could suggest is these simple ideas. I don't get it. Now the monk, as expected very calmly, doesn't directly respond but asks George, I know you came from 60 kilometers away. It's getting dark and it's already pitch dark. How will you go? George says, this must be some sort of trick question, sir. I came in my car and there is a car has headlamps and I can use that to navigate and reach my destination. The monk uh, says, but sir, uh, you your headlights cannot shine 60 kilometers away, right? So how will you be able to go? So George says, sir, this must be some kind of joke. Why do I need to see that far? All I need to see is a few feet ahead of my car and I will just navigate and reach my destination. So the monk says, son, the ideas that I suggested are exactly like the headlights. You just, it will take you a little bit ahead and a little bit ahead and soon you will solve all your problems. Can anybody guess what this picture is showing? Yeah, what's special about the ATM picture? The first ATM, anybody? Who did it? Sorry? No. It's a bank. Very good. Barclays. That was 1967. Uh, you should read about it. It's fascinating. But here is something interesting I found. In 1939 itself, another bank had deployed an ATM. This was done in the US, that's in the UK. Which company did this? It's a very famous bank. It's in India too. Starts with a C. City Bank. Now, in six months, they shut down this initiative, saying there is not much demand. Interesting, isn't it? Then we get into big objective and start from there. So the curve looks something like this. We expect that immediately the project started, boom, the transformation has happened. As a researcher into the field of innovation and transformation, I have to tell you that there is not a single innovation in the world that was able to do this. Which is also the reason why Citibank shut its ATM down. Because probably this is what they were expecting. They didn't realize that rolling out the ATM is a hard process that has to be replicated across the world. What we propose is, we call the Hypoha approach, our own approach. Use, it's, we use a digital camera as a metaphor, so you do a zoom in pivot followed by a zoom out pivot and then you hit the promised land. Now the interesting thing is there is an invisibility cloak between the two. Citibank couldn't see past that. You can only see it as you enter your journey. You can't pre-suppose it, unfortunately. Now, where do I zoom in, right? So, we had to come up with a new phrase we call performance under supply. I'll tell you what this is shortly. How many of you remember, many of you seem very young, 
How many of you remember the days in India before the arrival of ATM? You have done banking? Okay. So what is the problem you would have seen? Queues, lethargic bank offices. <laughs> Manual process with ledger. Timing. Okay. Timing. Now, on weekends you couldn't withdraw money, your own money. Now, did you see that as a problem? Therein lies my case. That is performance under supply. It exists. But because we have accepted that as a feature of the system, we no longer do anything about it. The first ATM was inspired by the chocolate vending machine. James Shepard Barron thought, if I put a coin, I get a chocolate. Why not I get put a token and I get 10 pounds of cash? That's how the first ATM started. Dance in the middle of the street to catch the cab, that is accepted procedure. None of us would question it. So now if you look at every industry, every job, every function that you do, it has performance under supply. You have to notice it, but it is bottom of the iceberg. It's not easy to spot. I'll give you one more. How many of you have met your doctor without having to wait? Assuming that doctor is reasonably popular. I have not seen a single human being raise their hand to this question. Because it's not possible through the world. But did you complain about it? You didn't. You don't. Because what is going to happen, especially in India, if you complain to your doctor, next patient, <laughs> there is a big queue over there. So there is, now, whichever person who is working on this problem, they solve it, they can rewire the healthcare system around their innovation. Like what Uber has done. It's very simple, but it's far-reaching in its impact. Having listened to the story of the ATM and the concept of performance under supply, many of you will connect the Zen story to the fact that the monk was giving a series of zoom in pivots to George. The point is, many companies see digital transformation as a big problem and they are like George looking for a big solution. Whereas the answer seems to be to start with a zoom in pivot and then do a zoom out pivot. The second Zen story is called Monks and Combs. There is a terminally ill father who owns a comb factory. So he calls his uh, three sons over to his bedside and tells them that, Sons, you know that I don't have too much time left. And I want to hand over the comb factory to one of you. I will not uh, split it three ways like a regular father. So I am going to give you all a challenge. In the next one month, Whoever sells the maximum number of combs to the monastery, the Zen monastery near our village up the hill, gets the comb factory. So the sons have been dispatched onto the job. Four weeks elapses, and all the sons, three sons, come back to the father's bedside. The first son gets up and says, Sir, I sold two combs. And father asks, How? And the son says, I convinced two monks that they can use the comb to scratch their backs. The second son gets up and says, Sir, I sold five combs. I convinced the monastery to put a mirror just in the entrance of the monastery and put five combs in a bowl there so that devotees, when they come up, they can comb their hair because their hair gets disheveled due to the winds blowing on the hill. So I sold five combs. The third son gets up. And says, sir, I have sold our factory's output for the next five years to the head monk of the monastery. And the father says, how did you do that? And the third son says, sir, all I did in the first two, three weeks was went and I sat there and observed what was going on in the monastery. And I spotted a problem. So I went to the head of the monastery and said, sir, a lot of devotees come, which is a good thing. And then they do make donations, but I found that you are not giving anything in return. And I have an idea. Why not we give a comb and I can actually embrace one of Buddha's sayings onto the rim of the comb. As a, we can give this to the devotees and whenever they comb their hand, they will think of your monastery and God's message will be um, reinforced in them. So the head of the monastery really liked the idea and signed a contract with me for our factory's output for the next five years.
Now, what is the mistake that the first two sons made? And what did the third son do correctly? And how does this story connect to digital transformation? I will leave that as a puzzle for all of you to solve and you can post your comment. And I might consider giving a book or something like that to the best answer. Please chime away in the comments section. See you all in two weeks.